Hello guys, welcome back with another episode of the summer preparation videos. We're going to start the translation series and today we have a very special guest, the brilliant Mrs. Dina Hassan. And she's going to give us a very special lesson in translation. Hello, Mrs. Dina. Hello, Mr. Abdullah. Thank you. Hello, guys. How are you? I missed you so much. It was long time no see, and I hope that you are all great and fine and you stay safe. Today we are going to start our new course of translation. And I have some translation rules. But before I start, I'd like to ask you, what's a translation? Translation is an art. It's, it's not just writing down words beside each other. No, it's an art that needs knowledge. You have to know grammar rules. You have to know vocabulary. And you have to use your special talent to put the correct word in the right place. I'm going to help you with some rules. I'm going to tell you today two rules. If you apply them, you are going to translate in a right way. The first rule is do not translate literally. You have to avoid literal translation. You have to deal with the sentence as a whole, not separately. The first example here is I want you to think how to translate this sentence. Some of you will say, oh, I want to answer. We should catch the values. Catch is wrong here. Natamasak. Natamasak is not catch at all. Think again. The answer is we should stick to values. We should keep values. We should adhere to values. The word natamasak here is not catch at all. This is what I call literal translation. So you, th you should think of the meaning of the word and put it in the right place. Another example, you have the word the fat. I have two different sentences in Arabic and I want you to think about their translation. I want you to think about their translation. And the other one, the fat in Tasarrafot al Gariba Mai, and Atakadam, the Shakwa Il al Mudir. You have here the same, the same word, the fat. But in the first sentence, it has a meaning, and in the second sentence, it has another meaning. I want you to think and to translate them alone, then replay my video again to see the answer. The first one, أود أن تخبرني كم دفع. أود أن تخبرني. I want you to tell me. كم دفعت? How much you paid? Maybe you wrote how much did you pay. This is wrong. You can't say how much did you pay. Why? Because it's a question inside a sentence. And when you put a question inside a sentence, you don't form it as a question. It's called indirect question. How much you paid? من أجل شراء تلك السيارة الرائعة to buy this wonderful car. I hope that you answered it right. The second one is دفعت تصرفاته الغريبة معي أن أتقدم بشكوى للمدير. I can say his strange behavior with me paid me here. You can say pay again here because دفعتني here means forced. Of course, not paid me. I'm not money. I'm a person. So it forced me. It made me complain to the manager. So the word dafa with money, it's pay with behavior, it's force. Another example. ينبغي أن نشجع الأطفال على توفير أموالهم بدلا من إنفاقها على أشياء غير ضرورية. I want you to take your time. 
and try to solve these two sentences. Then replay my video to see the answer. So, the first one. Tamal hukuma. Ala tawfir. You don't say work. You don't say the government is working on providing. No. You don't translate the word tamal. Skip it. And focus on tawfir. The, the government provides. Al mazid min furas al amal al shabab. More job opportunities for the youth. On tariq bina mashru'at jadida. You don't say here tariq way. No. On tariq as a whole is translated as boy. Bina building mashru'at jadida new projects. The second one. Yan baghi an nushagga al atfal ala tawfir amwalahum badalan min infaqah ala ashiya ghir daruriya. We should encourage the children to save. I can't use here the same, the same word, provide. No. Money, we save money. Tawfir. Tawfir, mazid min furas al-amal, was provide more job opportunities. So don't mix them. Yanbaghi an nushagga al-atfal ala tawfir amwalahum. We should encourage children to save their money بدل من instead of انفاقها wasting it it refers to money and money is uncountable so you have to use it on unnecessary things means شيء غير ضروري so the word توفير itself in Arabic is the same word but it has different ways to translate in English according to the sequence of the sentence. Here I finish the first rule. Moving to the second rule. The second rule is as important as the first one. In English, the order of the sentence is different from the Arabic sentence. So you have to put the sentence in the right order. For example, يحلم المصريون بحياة خالية من الفساد. If you translate this sentence in the same order in Arabic as English, you will say dream Egyptian, which is wrong. You can't say dream Egyptian. This is not English. But you have to say the Egyptians dream. You change the order of the sentence. بحياة, dream of a life. خالية من الفساد خالية without or void of الفساد corruption or rot so the Egyptians dream of a life without corruption or void of corruption or void of rot another example تحاول الحكومة أن تحل معظم مشاكلنا في مصر on طريق بناء مشروعات جديدة. Take your time. The government tries to حاول. In Arabic, I start with it. But in English, I put it second. The government tries to solve most of our problems. معظم مشاكلنا في مصر in Egypt. On طريق بناء مشروعات جديدة. By building new projects. So, again, the government tries to solve most of our problems in Egypt by building new projects. This is right. Another example. تلعب الرياضة دور هام في بناء الجسم والشخصية. Take your time. تلعب الرياضة. Again, we switch them. Sport plays. Dauran Hamman, an important role. في بناء الجسم والشخصية, in building or forming the body and the personality. Well done. نصب جميعا إلى مستقبل مفعم بالأمل. Think. We don't start with نصب. No, we start with the second part. نصب جميعا إلى مستقبل مفعم بالأمل. We all look for. We all want. We all seek to. 
a future full of hope. Another one. يمثل تلوث البيئة تهديدا كبيرا لحياة الإنسان والنباتات والحيوانات في شتى بقاع الأرض. Think. Let's translate it. يمثل تلوث البيئة. You start with تلوث البيئة. Environmental pollution. يمثل represents تهديدا كبيرا. A great threat. لحياة الإنسان والنباتات والحيوانات. A great threat on humans, plants and animals' life في شتى بقاع الأرض means all over the world. Don't panic. Whenever you find an expression in Arabic that you don't understand, try to calm down and think of the meaning in Arabic to get it in English. شتى بقاع الأرض means all over the world in every place in the world I finished today my two rules and I want you to answer these four sentences as homework and in the second part I'm going to answer them with you the first one تهتم الحكومة بالمشروعات الإنتاجية لرفع مستوى المعيشة 2. تحمينا طبقة الأوزون من معظم الأشعة الضارة القادمة من الشمس 3. تبني الدولة العديد من المصانع في كل أنحاء مصر 4. ذهبنا إلى الشاطئ في نهاية الأسبوع الماضي And when you do this homework, remember that you have to understand the meaning of the word in Arabic, then put it in the right word in English and do not translate literally. You also have to know that the order of the Arabic sentence is different from the order of the English sentence. Stay safe and see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you so much, Mrs. Dina, for this fruitful and entertaining lesson. So that's it, guys. Don't forget to post the answers of the exercise in the comments section below the video here. See you in another episode. Remember, stay safe and bye.